Hi guys, my name is Sean. I'm a houseplant enthusiast from Jakarta, Indonesia. I'm on my front yard here. In this episode, we're going to be focusing on landscaping the front yard a bit. There's a stairway here where I can actually put a lot of potted plants. And there's an area back here that is actually grounded. So there's already soil and some plants that came with the developer. Of course, I'm going to be removing some of those plants. I'm going to put in my own. And there's actually a lot of construction going on right now. As you can hear, it's a Sunday and there's not supposed to be working. And everybody is actually trying to make this de housing development happen. So pardon the noise. And that's actually a bathroom right behind me to my right where people are showering right now. Just going to give you a quick tour to show you what the setup looks like now. We basically arrived about two weeks ago and we dumped everything here just randomly and I scramble to kind of house there's a motorbike on me I actually spent the last few episodes filming the back area there so feel free to look at the last few episodes to see what the back garden looks like so yeah today we're going to be primarily direct light loving plants and they're going to be moisture loving plants because this, they're going to get rained on pretty much whenever all right I guess let's start everything from the beginning so we actually put everything literally on the carport here my car has been parked outside and as we arrived we dumped plants here and those that cannot take direct sunlight we have actually moved inside and i still haven't in my head planned out how i'm going to position everybody here of course it is a little bit overcrowded right now and again there's a table that I brought. I guess this is a rack, it's not really a table. So it's got two layers here and actually this is facing the south. So this is going to be getting really really strong direct sunlight as we approach December. It is September right now as we're filming. So it's gonna get a little bit more harsh as we go by and there's so many species of plants. Okay. But first of all <laughs> these pots uh, they're gonna be cleaned off. We just installed a hose yesterday. We're gonna clean these off and then we're gonna start bringing them inside. There's a few sick ferns. This one has a lot of pests on it so we have quarantined it. And then this one had like a lot of crazy ants so we just chucked it out here and let the ants flee <laughs> somewhere and then we're gonna rehab this little fern. So yeah, we just installed the hose so we can start watering plants and then I don't even know where to begin. There's a lot of sensevierias here. There's like random plants, there's some succulents. There's the variegated papaya, there's a lot of ferns. I've decided that I really would love ferns out here, although I don't know how they can take too much direct sunlight. We're gonna have to layer things. There's alocasias, they can take direct sunlight. This is a variegated cassava or in Indonesia we call it singkong. Look at how beautiful this is and they love full sun. This is a sarastenia. This is a carnivorous plant. Really, really beautiful. I'm probably going to insert a picture on the screen to show you what it looks like because the camera won't focus on this plant. Uh, aloe, which I really love having around the garden. They're very, very handy. We can put this down here. It won't. And then some Xerostichirus dengue. I have a video on this guy. They love full sun. A lot of caladiums here and some colocasias. I still haven't figured out again how I'm going to do this. And this is what it looks like before. And I would really love to show you the whole process of how I landscape things and, and just move them around to find the right uh, layering and the right style. But I can't. If I am filming the whole time, I would not get anything done and I'm on a tight uh, timeline. So I'm just going to show you what it looks like before. Give you a quick tour. This is a variegated fiddle fig. There are some beautiful plants down below. They are a bit more shade loving. That one is not. I, I can't remember what this one is, but it is so beautiful. Look at the variegation in this. I think this is probably a, some kind of jasmine, if I'm not wrong. And some Dracaena Milky Way. So there are a lot of hidden gems kind of tucked inside. There's a little kitty cat that is terrorizing the plants here. There was actually a bed of begonias here that the cat destroyed in one night. And look at what's... What are you doing, little one? What are you doing? I actually saw this cat about two weeks ago and it was actually much smaller. Hey, you want to say hi? You want to say hi? And he is the friendliest cat ever. And I know it's a he because he has balls. <laughs> but I really would love to adopt him. Uh, he's very, very tame, as you can see. Very nice characteristics and really, really beautiful. But I cannot take on animals right now. How do you like my variegated hibiscus, little kitty cat? How do you like it? So yeah, I guess I have to factor in that there's a kitty cat out here that is going to terrorize some plants. So I may not be able to keep many plants alive. That Oxalis is probably inviting 
uh, it's a disaster with the cats, I think. And that's Celia. Actually, Josie lives here. Her spirit lives here. This has yellowed up since I moved here. This is by my doorway. This actually gets a little bit of shade. Um, but yeah, this is my large monster that we saw in the, be in the back of all my previous videos in my propagation table. That's the Thermatophyllum by Pinodifidum. I did a video on this and in that video I did say that I was gonna let this go, but I didn't. I brought it here. And this one can actually take full sun. The cat, the cat is just really playful. He's just teasing us. Hey, what do you want? We're filming here. Can we get anything done here, huh? He actually listens, like he runs into the house sometimes, but he, he really, like when I tell him to leave the, a room or something, he would actually leave. So he's very obedient. I really love this little kitty cat. So anyway, this is going, it is, uh, this is in a pot now, but it is going into this pit here. And it, there's already some soil. So I'm not gonna take off too much of the soil. I'm just going to start planting it. I actually bought a shovel. I'm gonna start planting things in there and just letting things grow. I guess we missed out on this side. This side we have the uh, ficus audrey that I propagated for a video and some Zamias, Sansevierias, some Calatheas, Zenantes. These are some uh, light loving Calatheas here. And that one is curling. So it's, it's showing signs of stress. The Calathea white, white fusion. I don't see any mealy bugs here, but maybe this is too bright for it all of a sudden. So it is drooping and this is not a good sign. So let me figure it out soon. So I digress a lot, but oh, and this is really beautiful. I, let me see what the species is. I can't remember. It's a Leah, I think. Yeah, it is a Leah Cochinia burgundy. And look at how beautiful it is. It might actually be a little bit stressed out over here. It was living in bright and direct light before, but it got a little bit of direct sunlight here. So it's losing some of this dark foliage. I may actually start moving this inside a bit. It actually normally has like really, really almost black leaves that has turned into this. So yeah, and this is the Cissus Amazonica. This is actually a really, really beautiful plant, but it has become too bushy for its own good. Look at those tiny leaves. The leaves are not usually this tiny, but I think because it is so constricted in there, they stop putting out the larger, the normal size leaves look kind of like this, maybe a little bit bigger. And this fern I really love. I can't remember if this is a weed that uh, arrived in my backyard or if I bought it. But then this is one that I actually did a few days ago. And I quite like this setup. So, oh my god, the cat startled me. I was, <laughs> it just jumped right at me. Hey, hey kitty cat. So uh, this, this fern actually dries out quite fast. So what I did was I actually top dressed this with a little bit of sphagnum moss and it just loved it. And then I just put it in a terracotta pot. So all the plants here are pretty much going to be in terracotta pots and I need to give them the plate down below because it's just not so nice to have a terracotta pot just like that. So yeah, I've got a lot of those just hanging out. As you can see, I'm really not going to be running out of terracotta pots anytime soon. And there's actually a lot more indoors. This is only half of my terracotta collection. So yeah, a lot of the ferns, a lot of the plants here will be set up in a terracotta pot by the time you see updates at the end of this video. I guess I'm just going to get started. If I see something interesting, I may actually zoom in and show you how I do it. But for the most part, it's very easy. It's just digging up holes in there, loosening up the soil, and then just planting the plants in there and then burying it. So this is very, very simple. Outdoor landscaping plants are much simpler than potted plants. This is Alocasia macrorhiza variegated. Uh, and the Cordeline Chocolate Queen. I can't stop showing you the plants. Look at how beautiful this is. And then this is a Dracaena white Aspen and I have the video on, on both of these if you want to see how I care for it and propagate it I may do a video on that too. This is the hibiscus Starts with T, Tila, Tila something variegated and it's beautiful. It's recovering from a crazy mealy bug attack But look at how beautifully it's recovering. It's putting out so many vines. If this was grounded, this would be an unstoppable beast Oh, and this is a ficus triangularis variegated Somehow it survived. <laughs> I keep killing it. It really is not an easy one to care for. Let me check for pests. It is not an easy one to care for for me because I'm an overwater. And this is not doing so well. This is actually the variegated ginseng. But then it's looking scroggly now. I think it might have been a bit overwatered. I don't know what you, how you feel about the house being greeted by sensevarias like that. 
So yeah, let me quickly show you again. This is what the view looks like from, from all sides. And then we're going to look at the after soon. I'm going to give you a, a detailed walkthrough of what I did. And how does the one last look? All right, I'm going to start working now. All right, so I've dug a hole here. I don't know if you can feel how deep the hole is. Let me see if I can put my hand in and like up to my, I don't know how you say this. Maybe like I'm looking at my own elbow. It's around 35 centimeters deep. So there's a layer of like clay or silt type soil. And then there's some construction waste there, like gravel and like some, uh, what do you call it, blocks of concrete. This is some PVC piping here. So I got to be very careful. There might be even be some construction knife blades in there, knowing the Indonesian workers. So what I'm going to do here is this is the first spot that I've dug up. I'm actually going to stick the whole pot in here. It's a helicopter. Sorry about that. There's helicopter overhead. So I'm going to put this whole pot of thermophilum by Pinotifidem right in here in with the pot alongside because I don't want the roots to spread out into this area because this is a very limited space and I want to have a lot of plants living in here. And this is one particular one that puts out really, really aggressive roots system. So that's going to happen. I'm going to cut these off and kind of control it. Size. I, I don't want it to be too big either. It's already a really, really huge size as it is now. So I'm going to start doing that and I'm going to start styling the rest. I actually threw some of this soil away in, in little baggies. Oh, and this is very useful. So you can stab this anywhere in the soil. And this is a solar panel that collects sunlight throughout the day. And at night when it gets dark, this light automatically comes on. So I've had this in my old house and I just brought it here. It's very, very useful for landscaping. All right, so that's done. And what was my biggest regret? was not filming the part where I opened this up. There was something that was tying all the leaves together and it's very satisfying when, when I let go, everything went open. So I left a little bit of space behind it just to show you there's a little bit of an open sky here, but there's a bit of a wall. So that is facing, wait, hang on. That is north, south, east. So no, no, that's west, <laughs> it's the after evening and the sun is coming down. So that is the west side. And then I'm going to put some plants here that can take double direct sunlight, but maybe even a little bit of full sun. There's going to be a lot of plants living underneath it. As you can see, the pot is still peeking out from here. And I've decided to put this one here so that it can shine on the other plants behind it, including that monstera. And I need to angle it a little bit more. Yeah, okay, there you go. And then let me show you what it looks like from the front. It looks pretty nice. So yeah, there's going to be some more direct loving, uh, direct sunlight loving plants here. People are staring at me. <laughs> but there's also some shade loving plants down here. And from the front, this is what it looks like from the front. I can't film lower than this because my unit number is right below that lamp. And trying to remain as anonymous as possible. But look at that. That is what my neighbors see when they drive by. This is looking really beautiful. Wow. All right, it's actually Two days later, I've piled up the plants here, piled them still in pots. I haven't figured out completely, but I think I'm going to do it today. Today's the day where I'm going to be planting them into soil. So I was going to try them out to see how they do here, if they're getting too much shade or too much brightness. It's very, very noisy today, very loud. A lot of things happening in my area. And actually this Thermodophyllum by Pinedifidum has flopped over a little bit. So I'm a little bit concerned about that because now there's a lot of open view of the sky. There's too much direct light going to some of these plants. I'm hoping that this will perk up a bit. I'm wondering if it's be probably because I cut off a lot of the roots. Maybe it didn't like that. But, uh, or maybe I just need to water this. Maybe it's severely underwatered. So I may actually do that soon. But yeah, I'm going to start planting these. I decided to put some caladiums here. And here, facing us a little bit, I guess because they're such a cheery plant to have around. Some colocasias here. These are all like direct light loving plants and maybe even full sun, cordyline over here. And then some of the other plants like that uh, variegated hibiscus all the way down there. Let me come around. And the dracaena, I decided to put them in terracotta pots. Because this is moisture loving, I want to keep this in plastic pot and then terracotta because this can go, get into a bush really fast and I don't want this to overwhelm the space over there. And this one here, I just feel like it looks good in a pot. Like in night, this is very old pot. But I'm going to move it to like a nicer pot like that perhaps. So yeah, these will all like kind of 
hang around by the stairway area where I can rotate it and things like that. But yeah, those are the plants that I have decided to put out here. There's a little bit of succulent action on the side and some alocasias. They can take some direct light. And then here, hopefully, this will be shaded by the tomato phylum if the, this leaf will hold its place. <laughs> Over here, I can keep this Diffenbachia, this Philodendron Lynette, some Calatheus. Look at the Calatheus all the way back there. They love low light. So yeah, I'm going to start working. I'm actually going to show you how I'm working because I do feel a bit chatty today. All right, I'm just going to start from right to left. And yeah, I'm just going to do it. And you guys may watch me. I don't know if I'm going to edit this out. But again, I'm in a chatty mood. There's a lot I wanted to share. A lot of things happened lately. So with the house, a lot of things kept breaking down. I still found more leaks. They will probably have to tear down more walls. It is my, I think, 40th day that I started living in here. I don't know, man. So yeah, I basically took this out of the pot. I should probably prune this, but I, I don't have my pruning shears right now. Not a smart move. And I'm gonna just plant it in. And I wish I had a cameraman as well, or, or woman, to help me shoot this. But I don't, but I don't. And I, by the way, I'm avoiding plants that have very bready type roots, like the ones that will sprout sideways, because I don't want this to be overwhelmed by plants and plants that reproduce by themselves too much. So I'm trying, keeping moderately small root plants in this area. Don't want this to get too overwhelmed. So I had an export event a few days ago, did not go well. The, there was a, a stampede and the website could not handle the traffic. So a lot of people couldn't even log into the website. And then the, because a lot of people put the same plants in the basket, a lot of them could not check out. And also based on our automatic calculation, because we're trying to automate everything, all the calculations were, were a bit high for shipping. So people were turned off, but it was a lot easier to process that way rather than doing like manual calculation for shipping for hundreds of people at the same time. So I was trying to figure out a system that I guess it did not work too well. Okay, this is not working out because I don't want to turn my back away from the camera, but I kind of have to. I kind of have to bend over and I don't want you to be checking out my butt. All right, I, I don't think I will film everything because this is taking a while setting up the camera and then I don't know, I probably look horrible in this angle. Do I? I don't know, I'm not used to people overlooking my shoulder like this. But this is a lot more work than I thought. And I may actually have to throw away more of these, uh, these soil because these plants actually have a decent sized root ball already. Feel free to fast forward if you want to see the updates. See this space when it's done because I may be silent for a while. I may also talk at some point in this in this episode but i have been feeling a bit isolated very confused with what i'm doing because everything is going <laughs> oh my god what did i just do so this fern oh it didn't have a lot of roots at all i thought it was the whole pot but it was mostly soil down below so the roots aren't as established at all and there's some uh invasive pants along that i'm gonna take out yeah, look at how beautiful the roots are. I don't know if this is going to be in frame. I really don't. But really look at the fronds of these. They're so beautiful. And then they come from a main trunk like this. So this is kind of like a little tree fern, I think. I don't know what this will grow up to be. I have no experience with this. So I'm going to put it there. And this is, uh, can take a bit of direct sunlight because I had it in the front yard of my old rental home and it did well in some direct sunlight. Hang on, I may actually want to rotate this. Hang on. Let me rotate this so the leaves come and face us a little bit instead of facing the wall. And then it's going to shield some of the lower plants here away from direct sunlight. I think if I had all the time in the world, I would probably have dug it a little bit more a little bit deeper in there but I don't got a million things that I need to do so apparently with that uh, export event what I've decided to do is I'm probably going to have to reshoot it so I have to go back uh, to Titiki Jiao tomorrow it's actually about 45 minutes drive each way and then and reshoot it and try to redo this event but this time I'm going to calculate 
the shipping cost, I'm going to be tending to you guys myself. So it's going to be more of a one-on-one -on -one experience. And this time we won't mess up with the checkout system. We won't mess up with the shipping and logistics calculations. So this is a really beautiful plant. And whenever I had it in my frame or in my photos, a lot of people ask what this is. This is the Costas erythrophilus or erythr erythrophilum. I can't remember. But look at the red back underneath. This is actually very, very prone to fungal and bacterial spots, as you can see here. But if I spray fungicide on this often, it will actually be, have uh, perfect leaves. And look at all this baby growth down below it. This is actually one that spreads really fast, and I'm not sure about having it here, because look at how prolific this is growing. You'll just put babies off the side. And the way you propagate it is you can just cut it per a uh, few nodes and just stick it in soil. This is very, very easy to propagate. And again, it's very, very beautiful. Look at the rubbery. Uh, underside. This is actually a very easy plant to care for too. It's very very forgiving. It's never punished me for overwatering, and it's just such, such a nice underrated plant. I actually have a lot of content ideas and one of them includes like doing a doing lists of like plants that I really have been enjoying. I haven't been doing those videos in a while and I really miss that. So I might get into it soon as I have the time. I was also invited by home. He texted me about how long ago? Like two hours ago. He invited me to Chiang Mai where he's hosting a show, a plant show with a lot of international vendors. Such an honor to be invited by him. He's like, his collection is insane. I'm gonna link a video up above where I went to his home. Uh, there's actually two episodes uh, and he has the best collection of like interesting, unique, rare plants. And he truly like understands plants and their environments, how to care for them. What a wealth of knowledge. He's like someone who collects rare plants, not necessarily because of the price. But, but I have a feeling he does enjoy the hunt, the search and the attaining these plants. But he is someone who really, really enjoys their form, their beauty. And, and study how they can be grown, study the variants, the mutations. So he's amazing. And if you're watching this, thank you, Home, for inviting me. I'm considering, I told him I'll get back to him in about three days' time because I have so much going on right now. Like this is happening and I'm still fixing the house. So I'm not sure how I will be in about a month time from now. Moment of truth, I'm gonna be undressing this for you guys on the screen. Ta-da! This is what the roots look like. How embarrassing would it be if I had pests in there? But yeah, this is how they reproduce. You see the little nub here that, that's just growing sideways? Oh, I feel like I should dig deeper. It's not deep. It doesn't look deep enough. Yeah, so I have to displace this. Look at all this volume here. So that same amount of soil needs to leave. And I've already got, gotten like five bags of the soil out in the front and they haven't picked it up yet. I don't know if they will pick up. I mean the garbage truck people because I think they consider this to be like landscaping waste and I think there's a difference between divisions like if you're uh, if you're like you know putting to putting away dead leaves and soil and things like that there's like another truck that comes and picks them up I'm not sure I'm really I'm not sure but yeah kind of cloudy now it's been raining we've been having like storm warnings throughout Jakarta city and a lot of flash flooding happening so for, and i know that in many of your cities there's actually severe droughts so there has been an imbalance in the world's weather system and it's caused by global warming believe it or not i know that a lot of people don't believe in it and uh, they have the right to not believe in it but I personally think that, you know, the evidence is there. We just need to be very mindful about what we do. And I'm having a revamp too for my uh, personal self-care brand, my soap bars. I'm rebranding it and redesigning a lot of the products soon. And I'm going to be, call, I'm going to be calling this project Kinder. And this is just to remind people that we, we all need to be, you know, more mindful of the environment. So we're going to be having even more sustainable products than before, even though our products were already very sustainable, like we don't use plastic, we don't use like a lot of harsh chemicals that are bad for our skin and bad for the environment. But 
yeah, we're going to try to step it up even more. Like we're going to try to make things more efficient with production. We, everything might be minimalized a bit, simplified a bit in design. Yeah, and this Calathea Macriana is going back there. I'm just chucking it all the way back there. And then over here, I don't, I've been debating whether to have this, the, these two beautiful Dracaenas. I can't remember their names. They are two different variegations. This one has a light green on it. This one doesn't. But look at how beautiful they are. And they haven't been happy here. They've been rained on every day in this terracotta pot and general purpose potting mix. I haven't been taking care of them, but they actually would look like a nice uh, short tree. They look kind of like this, this Dracaena Reflexa, if you care for it correctly. So I'm waiting for the day that they will not do well. So I'm thinking this might be a pretty good spot for it because I'm counting on this fern to get bigger and bigger and giving some of these plants below shade. There's also going to be an alocasia in the front. This uh, alocasia with this dark, beautiful dark stem. I don't, I don't know if I'm in frame with this beautiful dark stem. And this can take a little bit of direct sunlight, probably even take full sun. Although uh, if you shock it, it may burn. But yeah, these guys actually like more sun than you think. We see them very commonly in landscaping. And I have another alocasia, it's an alocasia mycorrhiza without the black stem. And I think that one has to go. Like I, can, I don't think I can fit everybody in here. So yeah, I've decided to keep this one. This is just beautiful. So I'm taking these babies, look at the little roots they have. They were actually probably overwatered in this, uh, I don't know, some part of me want to like rehab this first in a pot indoors. But you know what? I've got so many things to do. I'm just going to chuck this in here and then bury it. See what happens. Gonna stick some soil all the way back there behind the coastus that we did. And I feel like I, oh, I want a cameraman, but there's two problems with that. Number one, I can't afford one. Especially with the economy now going like, going really bad. I hope that you guys are doing well by the way. I hope that you guys are not as shaken by the economy as I clearly am. But another problem is that I work well independently. I really like working with my own terms. I would like working with my own timeline. I don't like to you know, schedule and, and uh, arrange a time to be with someone and have them be late. And I don't know, I just don't want, like to rely on people. Let me check this out. This one has a decent amount of roots actually, and there's two of them. So I'm thinking, you know what, I'm gonna, do one indoors maybe this one the smaller one i'll do that one indoors by the way this is like my first time doing this everything is done intuitively i've never really seen anyone garden yeah you don't really need people to show you how to do this i think it's all wired in our in our nat natural being okay oh my goodness that's actually very backbreaking. Yeah. All right, here's that hole that I'm trying to dig. And I have so much more to, to work on. And I don't think I have the time to be on camera. So I'm gonna just finish it up and I'll show you what it looked like after. Thank you for hanging out with me. All right, it's actually about a week later. And I think I'm saddling with this. This is pretty much done. So basically here I have got a variegated cassava. How cute is that? They actually likes full sun. And then there's some trailing plants right here on this window ledge. And yeah, there's some uh, workers working in there. So they're pulling cable from the neighbors. And then let me turn around to show you. This plant belongs indoors, but they're renovating the inside now. So I have to take it outside. The Monstera stays, the Syngonium and Landii here. They make really, really good ground cover actually. There's a variegated papaya here. So I figured this is how I want to style the plant. There's probably room for some more plants over there, but I can't think of that right now. I'm in the middle of too many things. I like that rabbit's foot fern over there. And then this beautiful variegated hibiscus. I'm not sure if I showed you this before. This is a plant that I'm really loving right now and it's bouncing back from mealybug attack. It's doing really well now. Shaflera, some Dracaena. I kind of like the yellow variegation happening here. And below that, I've got this Syngonium. Is it the Maria? I'm not sure, but it's the color consistency. I don't know if you can see from here. Um, and then some palm. There's a lot of fern here greeting us. But let me come around to the front. So this is a 
pile of plants that they can take direct sunlight and I'm just leaving them here on this table because this, there's just room here I don't really know yet what to do with it but it looks like this from the front I quite like it and then yeah so this mostly sends severe as little plants uh, what else do I have to show you here? There's some Calatheus hiding back here because it cannot take direct sunlight so a lot of other plants are shielding it from the light and there's a lot of Sansevierus along these steps. I quite like that look and some ferns here. There's different fern textures here as well. Some ferns. Love this one. This looks really good in this pot right here. Look at that. So you see living in a plastic pot inside. This is just a, a cover pot for it in terracotta. Sorry there's a lot of movement outside. This, uh, this place is still in full construction mode. So there's a lot of cover plants here. I may actually go into detail in my full house tour at some point. But right now I'm just going to give you an overview of everything. I'm okay, moving back outside. This is what the front really looks like. There's some caladiums here. I quite like that, you know, the caladiums are greeting us. There's some caladiums off the side too. This is a Sansevieria kirkii. Some Sansevieria cylindrica. This is one that I took from my dad's plate. It was a pup when I took it. Now it's grown a little bit bigger. So there's a little bit of spiky action going this way and some caladiums going that way. I don't know if you know, but there's also a bit of aloe vera going that way. So kind of texture, I don't know if you can see, there's a little bit of this going forward. The aloe is kind of facing that way a bit. Uh, I don't know if I'm making any sense. And there's some full sun loving plants here. They will turn into the shrubs and I plan to keep them a bit short gonna keep cutting this I think this is a jasmine I think but I'm not sure and this is also I think this is the kind of jasmine but I might be wrong I don't remember what everything is this is the euphorbia milii over here so yeah this is how I uh, layered them for now again a whole row of caladiums I hope they do well this one they don't need uh, the leaves if the bulb is doing well it will keep sprouting leaves after leaves. So there's different kinds of baby caladiums, colocasias over here. And this plant, this plant is very good at warding off mosquitoes. I'm gonna insert the name on the screen. I don't remember it exactly. Very easy to grow, likes full sun, can turn into a bush, and it smells amazing. Day and night, it smells really good. Very earthy, very like a, like fresh cut grass with a little bit of sweetness to it. Quite like it. And then there's some cordylines here. And then below this uh, tomato phylum, I've got some philodendron linnet. It's actually one of my favorite philodendrons. It's actually very, very cheap here. And actually tucked back there, I'm gonna come around. Tucked back there, I don't know if you can see, all the way back there, get closer. This is a bit of a rupsalis and an asparagus fern. Asparagus fern, they can turn huge and they love full sun. And I really like the pot that it's in. It's in this jaggedy, little pot here so yeah this is my setup I guess I gotta get to more work the, the workers are actually sitting up outside staring at me filming now uh, there's some alocasias here too just so you know some really cute alocasia tigri uh, tigrina I can't remember what that one is um, but yeah I'm very I'm happy with what I have now it's gonna be constant moving and changing so stay tuned for more and the neighbors have been coming by to take photos because this is definitely different from their homes uh, I guess with that I bid you farewell I, I'm at botanist on Instagram feel free to DM me if you have any questions about plant care and propagations I'll try my best to get back to you meanwhile do take care and stay safe bye